The last talk today is by uh, Dr. Lacoste on the title of Stochastic Thermodynamics of Cell Division. Okay, <laughs> very good. Um, okay, so uh, thank you very much for, for giving me the, the opportunity to present this, uh, this very nice workshop. I, I'm enjoying it a lot. Uh, um, so this um, this work I'll, I'll talk about uh, is, I guess, a little bit more uh, going towards uh, bi biological applications, perhaps than uh, than, the, than the previous two talks. But you'll see that there is there is nevertheless some connections because the questions I am interested in are motivated by uh, stochastic thermodynamics. Um, so this presentation is, is really uh, part of the uh, PhD work of uh, Arthur Janton, who's working with um, with me at uh, ESPCI, and we started at, at the time uh, with, uh, with the postdoc uh, Reynaldo Garcia Garcia, who's now uh, assistant professor uh, in, in Spain at the uh, University of Navarra. Um, so before I, I get to the, this actual model, I wanted to uh, also briefly tell you about uh, other projects that uh, uh, we have been uh, looking at together with Arthur and, and, and Reynaldo. And, and essentially this, this boils down to the question on, on how to properly uh, average uh, measurements in lineage trees. So imagine that you have um, a population of cells uh, the, that evolves over time. And then so you have lineage uh, associated with that. And you want to uh, understand, uh, for instance, what is the, the composition that you get in the population at some final time and you want to relate that to dynamics at the single cell uh, level. Uh, so in general this problem is hard because you have uh, stochasticity at many different levels. I mean you have uh, uh, the division time uh, are stochastic, they, the, those cells don't divide exactly at the same time and also the trait that you want to look at for instance uh, also is fluctuating and, and there may be correlations between the mother and the, and the daughter. So, so there are uh, many reasons for which this problem is, is hard, but uh, fortunately, uh, thanks to tools of uh, stochastic thermodynamics, we have certain relations that remain true uh, despite the presence of correlations. So for instance, uh, there are relations between the distribution of the number of divisions uh, when you uh, follow lineage in a forward way or when you follow lineage in a backward way and the relations between the, this, the two distributions uh, is, is quite similar to uh, what you have uh, with fluctuation uh, relations in, the, in general uh, non-equilibrium uh, statistical physics. So we, we tested these relations and we also exploited uh, consequences of them uh, in this, uh, in these two, uh, in these first two papers, um, and then uh, more recently, we we tackled the issue of how to measure um, fitness and how to measure selection in this problem. So perhaps you know that the terms like fitness are uh, many meanings in, in in biology. So it's sometimes hard to find what is the best way to measure it because there are different definitions. Uh, the strengths of this approach where you, you compare uh, a forward and a backward distribution is that uh, it's, uh, it's a very uh, robust way to define a fitness or selection in this problem. So we, we hope that uh, this, can, this can be useful for, um, for exploiting uh, experimental data, for instance. Um, another project that I would like to say a few words uh, is um, is also uh, related to uh, trade-off. Uh, and this is not coming from the same uh, relation as in the previous uh, two talks, uh, but there is nevertheless uh, a similar structure. There is also bounds uh, behind this, uh, these results. Uh, and uh, for that reason, perhaps I, I, I wanted to mention it. Um, so what is the what is the problem in the in the, the gambling case? So we, basically, you we consider a simple model of a of a gambling situation where uh, we have a gambler that that puts bets on different uh, uh, let's say horses, for instance, and then um, uh, the, he wants to find the strategy that maximizes his capital. 
and it turns out that this strategy, in fact, is kind of risky. I mean, he's uh, uh, he, he could play a safer strategy, but then he would also make less money. So there's this kind of trade-off, which we found interesting in the context of gambling. We analyzed it uh, with uh, Luis Diniz from uh, Madrid University and Jeremy Antaberger from uh, Nancy uh, in France. Uh, and then we thought, we, we thought that perhaps this problem actually is interesting from a biological point of view because uh, you can think that uh, uh, this problem of uh, basically uh, having to make decisions uh, in the absence of uh, uh, knowledge about the, the result of the race is, is a little bit like uh, a biological uh, system that needs to take decision uh, in a fluctuating environment. And uh, this decision can, in fact, uh, uh, mean that the population as a whole uh, either survive or uh, disappears. So this, this trade-off uh, we thought is uh, interesting also in the biological context. And so we studied it uh, with the same people and we found that uh, indeed there's a similar structure in the, in the so-called uh, Pareto diagram uh, when looking at the fluctuations of the population growth rate as function of the mean or the average population growth rate. Um, so I will say no, no more about this, this project, but of course you can uh, feel free to, to ask questions uh, at any time. Um, so now I would like to, uh, to go to the main topic I wanted to tell you about. Uh, I mean, unless there are questions, uh, which is uh, a, model, a simple model for, for cell division uh, based on, on ideas of stochastic temporal dynamics. And so, as you can see on this on this uh, slide, uh, I'm asking, you know, when you have cell division, uh, what can we say about the change of uh, internal energy or the change of entropy in this process? And uh, perhaps we can also even imagine to use that this information to analyze experiments. Um, so to to do that, we we thought that uh, we can relate to. Uh, a body of works that, uh, uh, in fact, uh, arised recently on, on the resetting in, in statistical physics. So the, 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 the reason why we thought that there's a connection is that when the cell divides, basically, there is some properties that, from, that go from the mother cell to the daughter cells. And this uh, change of property is, in, in a sense, happening just at, at the time of division. So it's a, it's a bit like a, a, a sudden change in the value of a parameter, which uh, has some similarities with uh, resetting in the way it is studied in, uh, in statistical physics. Um, so this was our idea. So we, we uh, proposed to, to split uh, cell division in two, two separate sub-processes. Uh, one process being uh, the process of branching. So you have, for instance, a cell which divides uh, with a rate uh, R of X. Uh, this is one, uh, one sub-process. And then there's the, the other sub-process where, uh, as I explained, uh, some um, properties will go from the mother to the, to the daughter cell. Um, so to tackle this problem, so we use the standard approach uh, in stochastic thermodynamics, which, which, which is to rely on the, on the, on the Foucault-Planck type of this description. So in this case, we start with a one dimensional uh, version of it. Uh, so the equation looks like that for the, the population balance. So, so uh, in this equation, you have um, uh, N of X, which will be the number of cells with, uh, with the trait X, for instance. Um, so R, as I explained, is the rate of division. Um, you have a term here, which describes uh, the growth of the cells. So this growth uh, can occur via uh, deterministic part, deterministic uh, current, uh, which is controlled by a conservative force, this big F. Um, and then we assume that there's also a stochastic part in this uh, current, which can describe, for instance, uh, fluctuations of the trade within the cell cycle. Um, then, um, yeah, we have this part here, which uh, describes uh, the fact that uh, there's a transition from a mother, which mother cell with 
uh, trait X prime to a daughter cell uh, with trait X. Uh, so this is the description that we have. And then uh, we thought this perhaps is useful to, to start thinking of, of the thermodynamics of this problem. And um, so in doing that, we uh, took uh, inspiration from uh, a very nice paper from the first uh, speaker, namely uh, Udo Seifert, uh, who analyzed the question of the thermodynamics of resetting. So in this problem, uh, if essentially it was, uh, there was a particle that uh, could be reset to a fixed position X0, uh, starting for instance, for in a region which is uh, represented in pink here. Um, and so these are some of the assumptions uh, of this uh, model that we wanted to uh, revise. So first of all, there is no branching in this work. Second of all, as I mentioned, there's resetting to fixed position. And third assumption, there's, there's thermal noise. And all these three assumptions we will have to revise, as, as I explained. Uh, of course, we only we didn't take only inspiration from this paper. There has been a lot of uh, very nice work, actually, from people in the in the audience or in the organizers uh, who have uh, attacked this uh, this problem of resetting. I mean, just to mention a few names, so Edgar and then uh, Arnab or Anupam have worked on this uh, and have contributed very nice uh, nice nice works. Um, but the approach I will uh, mainly mentioned today is uh, in the line of the of the Seifert paper. Uh, so to do that, so we, we, we started by uh, proposing a, a, a generalization of the of the first law for, for this problem in the case where uh, you have branching on top of, 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 of resetting. So as usual in, uh, in stochastic thermodynamics, so uh, we define the internal energy uh, from this potential uh, V uh, that uh, was in the model. Um, the heat is the heat transferred to the thermostat and it has to do with the conservative force uh, F and the current uh, J. Um, and then we uh, define two parts in the work. Uh, there's the, the part that is due to branching and the part which is due to resetting. Uh, so with this sign convention that we choose, so we count positively the work uh, extracted from the system. Uh, and because of that, we uh, end up with this expression of the, of the branching work rate. Um, and uh, and this, this expression here for the resetting. So for instance, you can see in the limiting case where uh, the potential is flat, then as you would expect, uh, there will be there will be no work in this case, um, and so if you want to understand the the second expression here, you have to uh, see that this is a difference uh, in the two uh, potential energy that you need to evaluate. And here, this average means that you you take the average over the the newborn uh, distribution. So the new only the newborn cells, in fact, are important to to to, to calculate this average. So this, this makes sense. So the work uh, due to resetting is related to different uh, in, uh, potential energy in a situation where uh, you have the trait X with respect to uh, what it was uh, for the newborn cell. Uh, so this is the first law and contains already some interesting things. Uh, but of course, we, we had to do also the, the, the second law. And again, I mean, the past is uh, quite standard for uh, people in this, uh, in this audience. Uh, so the system entropy is uh, the Shannon, uh, uh, basically uh, entropy associated to the distribution P of X. Um, then there's a contribution of the medium entropy or which is related to the heat uh, because there's, there's a connection uh, due to the via the Einstein relation, um, and then uh, as you can see, there's a part which is uh, necessarily positive, which is the entropy production rate uh, of the non-equilibrium current J. Uh, and then what is so this part is uh, the, so these three terms are very standard, and then the, the the two new terms are the the contribution of resetting and of branching. Uh, so now when you look at uh, the form that they take, in fact, you see that 
it is very similar to the uh, previous uh, slide uh, because uh, this entropy uh, rate uh, looks very much like the work rate if you replace the potential uh, v by uh, the log of uh, the probability p. And the same happens for the other term. Uh, so now this is uh, all very nice, but uh, it's and it can be uh, and it's it, if it is found to agree with the the the, the approach of uh, Udo uh, in the in the limit where the, the, there's no branching. Um, but it's only valid when uh, when there's a there's a finite temperature, and this is a, uh, this is somewhat a limitation because. Uh, there are situations where you you may want to consider actually uh, uh, the atermal case, and so to to uh, cover this situation, uh, we had to uh, look for a different splitting of the entropy production, uh, because the previous splitting uh, would have some divergent terms, and so we uh, we split the, the 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 entropy slightly different way. Uh, now we have a term which has to do with the force divergence um, f so this is divergence of this uh, force uh, big f that i uh, introduced earlier uh, and then uh, there's another term which is uh, necessarily positive and which has to do with can be written also as a force divergence but for an entropic force and this uh, this alternate splitting is interesting because then there's no problem we can take the limit uh, where uh, d equals t equals zero, so the atomal limit. Uh, so in that case, naturally, there's no uh, uh, stochastic part in the current. The current is only uh, deterministic, so it's only this part here. Uh, and this uh, this extension is important because uh, there are many models in this uh, this field where uh, deterministic evolution within the cell cycle is considered, and the only source of stochasticity is in the in the cell division itself so to describe this fact this this type of models we have to to have an atomal version of the of the second law so this is what we have now for for this so i, I hope this is um this is clear uh, please uh, interrupt me if otherwise okay so now um we go back to the problem of cell division uh, the question of what triggers cell division, as you can imagine, is a very old question, and it's uh, it's not a simple. There's no simple answer to this question. Uh, but uh, people have considered all kinds of models uh, where the division may be triggered by uh, the size. So when I, I mean when the mother cell reaches a certain size, then it divides. Uh, some model uses the age. And lately, a lot of people have worked in the so-called ADDER model, where the, the key parameter is the increment in size uh, as measured from the, the cell at birth. And so for all these models, um, they have been studied uh, quite a lot in the literature. But to our knowledge, no one has uh, discussed before uh, the thermodynamic uh, aspect of the various models, which, in our opinion, is an important aspect to decide, for instance, which of the model may be favored in particular in particular terms. Um, so, if I just take the the sizer and the other, the sorry, the sizer and the timer again. So this is uh, what I told you: division is triggered by size or age. The resetting occurs either to smaller cell for the daughter cell. And in the case of the timer, it, the resetting is, is to the age zero. Uh, in both cases, the division rate is an increasing function of either the size or the age, typically. Uh, and these are the form of the, the, the force uh, F. So it's a simple linear uh, form in the case where the growth is, is assumed to be exponential. Of course, not every cell uh, grows exponentially, but this is uh, this is a starting point, and this is not a limitation for our approach. Uh, in the case of the timer, uh, this is even simpler. Uh, this function f is just a constant. The corresponding potential is uh, non-confining in both cases, 
either an inverted parabola or uh, just a linear function. Uh, so with this uh, form now, we can look at the consequences of the energy balance uh, for uh, all these models. Um, and um, so here I reminded you the expressions of the work uh, contributions that I uh, mentioned earlier. And so uh, with this uh, form of the energy balance, we, we found that uh, the resetting uh, work rate uh, is negative and the branching work rate is positive. Uh, this, this comes because of the po po uh, properties of, for instance, uh, the, the, the fact that the potential is non-confining, uh, of course, uh, leads directly to a well-defined sign for this difference here. So this is how we find uh, that we can prove generally that this is uh, uh, negative for this kind of uh, models. So what this means physically is that uh, it means that the resetting basically increases the energy of the system, which can then be spent to create a new cell by branch. Uh, David? Yes, sure. Go ahead. So, uh, in the last slide, uh, you mentioned there are several reasons or, uh, or several triggers for the cell division. Uh, is yeah. this the, is sometimes also the external coups come to divide a cell, like uh, other cells or the external uh, atmospheric conditions, etc. So those are also included in this system. Or... Um, that's a good point. Uh, of course, this uh, these parameters here they can depend on additional uh, uh, variables due to the environment. So the, in this model, we, there's no uh, the state of the environment is not really taken into account in these models. So I, this is why this is not there, but yeah, this could be, this could be added, of course. Okay. Please continue. Thank you. Um, okay, so, so if I take the, the timer, for instance, this is the simplest of the, all these models. Uh, these are the equation for, for the distribution of the H, P of A. Uh, so this is simple equation. And you see, for instance, the second equation uh, takes into account the boundary condition. Uh, so uh, namely that uh, as a cell divides, this contributes to uh, the number of cells at age zero due to the, the, the timer assumption. Uh, so this, uh, this equation are simple, it can be solved. So this is the analytical expression. And uh, the steady state uh, second law is enough to understand what's going on. We can calculate each term exactly in this case. Uh, and we can prove that uh, indeed uh, the terms, the, the signs are, are, are as, as, as I show here, as, as a consequence of the, this uh, uh, monotonicity of the, the log of the steady state distribution, we find that uh, there's the, the signs as, as written here. So now we turn to the to the sizer. So the sizer uh, is a, is a bit more complicated because the the steady state uh, uh, distribution uh, uh, doesn't have a simple analytical form. At least we didn't find uh, any. Uh, but fortunately, uh, if one look at uh, experimental data, for instance, we see that uh, these distributions are very close to log normal distribution. Uh, so if we assume that, and we assume uh, for instance, the power law in the division rate as function of the size, uh, then we can uh, use the steady state uh, second law, which has a slightly different form. There's no factor two here. Uh, and nevertheless, we find essentially the same sign also for the sizer, but with different expressions of the, of the two contributions. Uh, yes, yeah, so I, I didn't... Uh, uh, exp explain that uh, the single cell growth rate has to be equal to the population growth rate in order for a steady state to exist uh, in this problem. Um, so now we uh, thought this is interesting and perhaps we, we can propose also an analogy with, uh, with thermal engines to understand uh, basically uh, the possibility to convert uh, entropy from one process into the other process. So namely from the branching to the resetting or, or vice versa. And this, this for, this, the reason for this analogy is suggested by this, uh, these equations. So you see in the three models, 
they look the same. The only thing that changes is the prefactor in front of the population growth rate. Uh, but otherwise, uh, this population growth rate splits into two terms of, of the, typically of different signs. And this is similar to uh, what happens in a heat engine where you have uh, a transduction of energy uh, between uh, that come from a driven process, uh, uh, from a driving process, sorry, to, a, to an output process or driven process. So in this case, we see that what must be the, the driving process is the resetting and what is the output process is the branching. Uh, so this naturally suggests the definition of an efficiency in that way, thermodynamic efficiency, which is between zero and one as usual. And then we have looked at uh, how this, uh, this efficiency uh, behave for the different models. So for instance, for the, for the timer, so we, we can uh, uh, measure the, 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 the strengths of the control in the timer by uh, an exponent alpha in the division rate as function of the age. So for instance, if alpha is zero, essentially the model is uncontrolled. Um, but when alpha is going to infinity, the model is uh, as controlled as you can get because the division occurs deterministically when, uh, um, when A goes to one. Um, and so what we find is that the efficiency increases uh, with the strengths of the control. And this efficiency in this model, uh, which is uh, a limit, which kind of, which is uh, solvable, and it essentially is, is an universal number, which is here. So now for the for the sizer, uh, we make uh, similar assumptions. So we are, again assume a, a power law for the the division uh, rate as function this time of the of the size. Uh, the cell growth is, uh, is exponential with, uh, with the, this, uh, this rate single, the single cell growth rate nu. And as I mentioned, uh, nu has to be equal to big lambda for a steady state to exist. Uh, now the efficiency looks like that as function of the alpha. So again, the efficiency increases with the strength of the control as you go from uh, left uh, to right. Uh, but interestingly, what we have for this model, which we didn't have for the timer, is that there is a small uh, layer at the bottom of the, of the diagram where you see we reach a very high efficiency there when you uh, approach zero. And this is, uh, in some sense, an equivalent to the Carnot uh, regime because, as I told you, the population growth rate plays a similar role as the entropy. Uh, so therefore, it corresponds to... Uh, the equivalent of a reversible operation of, uh, of the engine. Uh, but interestingly, so you can also reach efficiency uh, one uh, by having a, a large value in the new. Um, okay, so I am essentially uh, done. Uh, uh, so I just uh, wanted to uh, uh, remind you uh, main um, uh, results of this uh, this work. So uh, so we have essentially proposed to uh, split uh, cell division uh, into two sub processes, resetting and branching. Uh, this allows to uh, uh, identify separate contribution thermodynamic contributions in the two sub processes, and it also allows to make connection with uh, uh, resetting work in the, in the statistical physics community. Uh, so we found that in the context of, of, of uh, models of uh, regulation of the size, which are very popular in, uh, in biophysics, we find that resetting must act as a driving process and branching as a driven process. Uh, and then we also introduced uh, uh, an analogy with, with thermal engines, which allow us to quantify the transduction of one um, type of entropy into the other type. And we believe that these ideas may be helpful to uh, understand uh, cell growth and cell division from a thermodynamic point of view. And uh, with that, I, uh, let me thank you for your attention. And I'll be happy to take any questions. Thank you very much. Now the time for question and discussion.
It looks like Udo. Udo has a question. Yes, thank you. Udo, please. Yeah, uh, David, uh, thank you very much. Uh, nice, nice uh, result. I'm a little bit worried about the physics behind it. I mean, in this first law and the second law are mathematical relations, I guess, which, which follow from the equations of motion you're using and also, of course, from the spirit of the stochastic thermodynamics for systems where perhaps the thermodynamics is more obvious. Now, I mean, for instance, take the internal energy um, of the cell. If I understand correctly, the bigger the cell gets, the smaller the internal energy becomes, right? Um, it's, I mean, it's, it's going downhill, right? The potential is yes. minus. Yes, our, poten our potential is, uh, is going downhill, yes. Right, so I mean, you know, beyond beyond the mathematical structure, I mean, how, how seriously should I take this physically? Or would you, you know, would you would you really want to assign these quantities in physical terms beyond the nice mathematical structure? Well, I think this is a general question for all uh, stochastic thermodynamics model. I mean, so no, I, 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 no, sorry, David, I do not agree because you know, if you take if you take uh, colloidal particles in a in a in a potential, or if you take molecular motors or a polymer which is stretched, I mean, th this is physical internal energy is, is physical energy, right? If you take a let's say a polymer or so. Yes, yes. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm completely aware that this is, uh, this is only a toy model. I mean, uh, for, for cell division and cell growth. So I, I completely agree with you that I mean, uh, concepts of heat of energy are, you know, associated with this toy model. And so, in some sense, um, we're still, uh, we're still missing some things. Uh, but I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, this, I guess, more accurate simulations are needed to, to, to check this point. But it's possible that nevertheless, in the spirit of thermodynamics, some, in some cases, only uh, uh, using a restricted number of variables can still account for, for, for some physical quantities. So I'm still hopeful. No, I, I, I fully agree with you that perhaps the, the equation of motion is, is physical and makes sense, but I mean, I find it difficult to assign these thermodynamic quantities. And I, what do you mean you need more, you would need more simulations to check this? I mean, if you simulate the model, these equations of motions, of course, you will reproduce the theoretical results, right? Because the theoretical results are kind of identities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, but of course, I mean, it's, it's not about simulating this model. I mean, this we've done. I mean, I think this is, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm convinced by what we've done i mean i, I sure, sure. Uh, no no this this uh, what i mean is the larger simulations which uh, which would uh, which would include like uh, uh, you know more degrees of freedom like metabolic uh, steps oh i see yes of course larger simulations and that that can perhaps check some of these things that's this i think would be interesting yeah okay i see your point yes thanks Is there any other people for the questions? We still have six minutes, although in program we are not behind. I was too short, too quick. <laughs> no, it's not what I mean. <laughs> David, I just missed the definition of efficiency that you were, you were using. Can you just, uh, yes, so thank you, um, Sohab. So, um, so this is uh, this is basically coming from uh, this is this is uh, defined here. Um, so I think it's a general. Uh, property when you when you write uh, the, the second law when you can write it as, as the sum of, of two contributions like that uh, sigma one sigma two 
Uh, I mean, usually we associate, uh, or at least in certain cases, we can associate the contribution sigma one to a driving process and the other one to, to a driven process. So, so for instance, when uh, there's transduction in, of energy in a, in a molecular motor where chemical energy may be turned into mechanical energy, then you, you will have a similar splitting uh, and also with the Carnot engine, you can also uh, write it in that way. So it's a, it's a generic uh, way to, um, uh, to split the, the entropy production in two sub-processes. And yeah. so here we have these two sub-processes because the, our second law takes this form, where basically the total entropy production is replaced by this, uh, this population growth rate. Uh, which must be positive because we assume that uh, the, the population is growing in our, on average in our, in our model. Um, and so at least uh, we have a similar, uh, similar relations. Uh, and then, so this allows us to discuss the, the conversion of one uh, type of entropy into the other, uh, thanks to this efficiency. Yeah, and uh, the fact that uh, that ratio is less than or equal to one that is obtained analytically. Uh, but you, you, you see, I mean, the, the fact that uh, um, this uh, this ratio is, is positive, well, that it has to do with the, 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 two, the size of the two sub-processes that we derived in yeah. the different models. We, we proved that the signs are indeed that way for these models. Uh, so this accounts for the lower bound. And then the upper bound uh, comes from uh, from the second law itself. At least in the in the case of the sizer, you see this this follows immediately from that. Okay, uh, thank you. Hello. Hello. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, in this model, uh, you are saying that this resetting and re resetting is the driving process, right? For this yes, yes. division, and then the division happens, which is uh, there. Uh, so, um, so in actual cell division, cell actually prepare itself for division. Uh, means the doubling of the genetic material, copying it, and all, and then uh, it starts to divide. Right, this uh, thing. So in in the in the cell division, actual cell division process. But in in between these two process, there are waiting times also. Like for example, like people say it is like G zero phase or G one phase or something like that. Uh, so is those things are included? I, I mean, in the model, the details. No, no. This is a very simple model. We there's there's no there's no delay. There's mm -hmm. no delay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and and typically in the way you th you think of uh, of cell division, I mean the, the two things are intertwined. I mean the resetting and the branching uh, are are occurring together in, uh, yes, in actual yes, cell division. Yes. So so, yes. so this uh, this is a way to uh, split the two processes in our mind in order to uh, to do the thermodynamics. But actually the, the things can can happen uh, together. The inter intertwined process yes. you are saying. Okay. Yes. At least that's the way I look at it. Yeah. Okay. okay. The last question will be by Leonardo Garcia Garcia. Please. Uh, yes. Oh, um, more than more than a question, I I just would like to to make a comment, uh, probably related with the um, I mean, a little bit related with the question of by by Yudo, and in support of of of, of David's uh, answer, and is that I mean. Probably this this description in terms of, of an energy is a sort of uh, just uh, an effective description which you can always do when you have, uh, as in this case, just a one dimensional process. But what what really happens in, in the case of growth is that is that what you have is is really an, a, an irreversible process. So uh, when you look at the cell growth, it's an irreversible process which is controlled by by internal degrees of freedom. Which, you know that. And um, and what happens, for instance, is if you have if you have uh, not only one trait but two or three, you may probably lose this uh, potential or artificial potential structure. So this will become sort of non-equilibrium 
uh, sort of an equilibrium force or something like that, non-conservative force. So if, if um, so this description in terms of a potential is of course due to the fact that you have only one degree of freedom, but uh, in a more general description, you basically, you would turn that into, into, into a work or a heat, something like that, which is related to, to the hidden degrees of freedom, which are influencing growth. Um, um, uh, that, that's the way at least I, I would like to think uh, about it. Um, so just, just that comment. Okay, thank you very much. And thank you, David. And thank you all the speakers of this session. And the, thank you for the audience. <laughs>